Peter. Benjamin, hello. Oh, hey, how are you, man? Very well, thank you. How are you? Very well. Very glad we get to have this uh, this chat. How's your day? Uh, it's six thirty in the morning here, so it's only just starting. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry to have to wake you up. No, no, it's all good. I I specifically chose this time because I was like, it's just like it's not too early for me to wake up so yeah like, it's all good <laughs> okay but so that's you're in the future though from my standpoint it's, it's thursday for you and it's wednesday uh, for me yeah so i'll say you're gonna have a great day we'll put it that way <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I, at least i know we make it to thursday yeah there you go um and obviously like it's it's opening day for borderlands here so like i'm legitimately like going to go see it in like four hours so it's like it's kind of cool to talk to you just as it opens um congratulations on the film as well um thank you i like i've never played the game so like i'm i i'm going into this blind like do you looking at this film do you think like it as someone who's uninitiated do you think it like it works as a film that will cater to the fans as well as the people that are just going to go see it well, that's a pretty tall order. <laughs> Pleasing all of those uh, cohorts uh, would would uh, sounds challenging. Uh, I I am was not I was familiar with Borderlands when I took the part of Marcus, but I had not played it. And and I will say, in full disclosure, uh, it's it was one of those games. I I I got I got I gleaned a lot more watching Marcus's history on YouTube than I did playing the game because I kept getting my ass kicked. To be honest, I just wasn't. I was. It was. It was uh, humbling. <laughs> so I can say. I can say at least uh, for those of us like me who had a, did some challenges playing Borderlands, this is a really easy way in. Yeah. to this world that has been established by Gearbox and, and the great Randy Pitchford across so many titles, venerable titles for so many years. Um, so, yeah, as to whether or not we're going to please everybody, I'm confident knowing uh, <laughs> the uh, opinions of, of fandom, we're not. <laughs> yeah. but, I, but, but I hope that the people, that whatever people make of, of uh, the film, I trust that they know how much love went into every element of it from, from the, the, the dedication of the extraordinary cast I got to work with to the dedication of the, the crew, the, the, the costume design by Daniel Orlani, the production design, the, the, the vehicle design. So I, 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 the weapon design. So for the diehard fan of Borderlands, yeah. they are going to find a production that uh, took sweated the details of the, the physical properties of Pandora and of that world. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and it was it, uh, beyond that, uh, the fact that we, we, you know, that this crew accomplished all of it through uh, COVID protocols makes I th it, it all the more miraculous. You know, Peter, that any film gets made or completed, I guess, yeah. is a miracle. Um, it's hard for people to maybe wrap their heads around, but it's such a crazy enterprise making a film. But to do that with an international cast, an international crew in Budapest mm. during lockdown, it's, that's more than a miracle. That's, you know, <laughs> a, a horse off a diving board into a cup of water, you know, and... The, the amazing people I got to be alongside on this crazy adventure, uh, it's unforgettable. I think that's the thing, like, it's like, you know, regardless of how, of how, like, fans react to the film, it's like, I, I, a lot of the times you want people to really, like, step back and just go, getting a film made is, is, is a massive challenge, and you just want to sort of just go, like, there's so many elements that go into it, and you just, like, you know, like, fan, fandom, especially when it comes to, like, games and things like you know they're so vocal and like they're so ready to just like go in hard on the film and you just want to say like just like eat like ease up you know and just like look look at the bigger picture and I think like what you've said like there's there's more than just a story because obviously across like games you've got so much story and you can only condense that to 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 however long you want the film to be so it's like you've really got to look at the the world that has been built as, as you said i think that's i think that's right but on the one on the other 
I would, I, any strong opinion, positive, negative, indifferent, at least, you know, that somebody's passion has been excited. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's a funny thing, you know, growing up, I was an enormous Stephen King fan and he so publicly reviled <laughs> Stanley <laughs> Kubrick's version of the book. Yeah. And I had loved the movie and then I'd read the book and then I heard his opinion of the, of it. And I started to think, Oh, well maybe he's right. Maybe Kubrick really screwed up. And then years and years later, Mick Garris directed uh, a, a, a very diligent screenplay that, that King wrote that was the novel. Mm. And you sort of got the understanding. For me, when that was released, I think in the mid 90s and I watched it, I was very excited to watch it. And I was like, no, this doesn't this doesn't work the way Kubrick worked. And, and, and the thing is, is Kubrick didn't do. A, a dedicated, uh, you know, plot point to plot point interpretation. Yeah. But what he did do was he created a film that captured the menace and mm. captured the fear. It, it captured the novel, even though it didn't articulate the plot. Yeah. The way that King, I think, wanted. Yeah. And 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 I hope you know, bringing up Kubrick and. King in service of a summer movie is pretty highfalutin, right? But but I hope that we've captured something of the game, mm. not quite literally. You know, yeah. Randy Randy Pitchford uh, was fond of saying, I believe, is still fond of saying that that sort of as the MCU is to the comic books, it's not one to one. Yeah, this is sort of the Borderlands cinematic universe. I think he said, and 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 it's not. So there's characters, there's elements, there's lots of things that will be familiar to devotees of the series, hmm. but things aren't going in the characters that are from different time periods and from different storylines are intersecting in new ways. That I think you know, some people are going to look at it and they're going to say that's not my Borderlands, hmm. um, but I think other people will either not be attached to what came before or will be um, will understand as I came to understand that doing a one-to-one -one, uh, as much as you may want it to exist may not be the way you skin the cat of bringing the story to, to film. I hope I didn't go on too long. No, no. Yeah, no, I got it. Cause like I, I was reading about your, your character and like, you know, there's, there's so many iterations I read, like, bus driver, weapons dealer, Gina Gershon's character's third husband. Like, yes. like when you're, is there, um, like, how do you approach Marcus, like, with someone who's, like, an established personality? Like, how do you approach that and try to bring, like, your own depth to someone like that? I love that question. It's an excellent question. It, it begins and ends with the work that's already established, yeah. which means it begins and ends with Bruce DeBose. And Bruce DeBose has played Marcus, has made his work, has elevated Marcus to, to a really uh, uh, beloved character in the, in the Borderlands uh, universe. Mm. And my first and foremost responsibility, at least to my mind, was to not do a disservice to all of the really great work that he had established. Mm. And that I think actually compounded, you know, how do you, how do you make it yours? Mm. Um, but uh, I was, I was advantaged, I think, A, by his example and B, uh, you know, Marcus is, is, he's got this sort of Eastern, vaguely Eastern European dialect, but of course it's a Pandorian dialect, right? He's not really from Eastern Europe. Um, and getting outfitted with this costume by Daniel Orlandi, like this ridiculous, it's right out of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I had a gold tooth made and I had, you know, and it was a process really getting to know him. But I will say, you know, often when you get the shoes and you get the, the hair and makeup done and you get all the accoutrement and you look in the mirror and it's not quite you looking back. Sometimes the character just sort of uh, says hi to you. And, and that was kind of with Marcus. Um, so I, I, I really loved getting to, to inhabit 
this guy. And when we got to Sanctuary City and I got to, you know, pine over Gina Gershon, I mean, that's a pretty good days. If you, if you got to pine over somebody, uh, make it Gina, because it's, <laughs> it's really easy to do. And we'll see what happens in, in the special features, because there's a ton of stuff that we shot that has made it into sort of stuff that I've seen around these press events that I think will be on special features down the road that isn't quite in the film, including, I hope, my fingers are crossed, but uh, we had a, uh, we imagined Marcus kept the tape running one day and he's disheveled and, and, uh, in a bathrobe pining over Moxie um, <laughs> that I hope, I hope fans will get to see that at some point in some form. Well, speaking of, of, of Gina Gershon, like obviously this cast is <laughs> stacked and I'm like, as an Australian, yeah. as an Australian, I wouldn't be able to like not talk about Kate Blanchett. Like, so how is it like going into a film like this and then realizing, Oh, I get to work with Kate Blanchett, Gina Gershon, Jamie Lee Curtis. Like how, like how was that experience of working with just this wild ensemble? Just a total pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> it was, I mean, Kate, uh, you know, you, you can, I could on one hand count actors living and dead that I would wish to work with. Mm. And Kate's on that one hand, mm. you know, so you, you get to show up, for work with her and and you know the 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 expression don't don't meet your heroes right kate um is exactly who you 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 hope she'd be yeah uh, magnanimous uh focused the whatever the shot whatever the moment the attention to detail uh is total which of course not a surprise when you look at the quality of work that she has produced over decades. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, still just getting warmed up this woman. I mean, what she has yet to give us is it, it's mind blowing. Yeah. But so the, you know, my first day on set was a 12 hour day with her in Marcus's bus. And uh, you know, it's, it's a, a, a point of just happenstance when when you're like Kate was number one on the call sheet, it will happen on a given day that uh, when a character like me further down the list has his work to get done and the the number one on the call sheet will be released. Mm. Kate was there, whether she was in the shot, whether she was not in the shot, whether she was out of focus in the background of the shot. It was her and I together that whole day. And my, uh, appreciation for her um as a scene partner my appreciation for her as let's be uh real clear as a as a giant of this craft um is uh total and uh yeah this don't meet your heroes meet kate because <laughs> she does not disappoint i've yeah i've had the um i've had the pleasure of uh zoom zoom interviewing her so i'm like i i've like i've seen the i i get the you know being just like completely taken with everything that she exudes so it's like i get it and i, I yeah and i was like and i'm just on that like being have did she did you learn any australian lingo because we like to say things that don't make any sense to a lot of other people so i'm wondering if you caught up oh, listen man i i know a lot of you convicts <laughs> i have uh, <laughs> i'm good friends old friends with uh, travis fimmel uh who uh, you know he's, from uh, he's a he's he's a, he's a character i like <laughs> yeah i once asked travis i said forgive me if i'm cut this if i offend anybody but i asked travis a long time ago i said what do you call you know, in America, we, 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 we have the term redneck for a guy that's out on the farm or a guy that, you know, sometimes it's a derogatory term, mm. but it, it's, you know, you get, you get a redneck from being out in the field. Mm. And I, I said, I, I asked Travis uh, one time, what do you call a redneck in Australia? And he goes, an Aussie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't know. I mean, I, I have, I am very, very fond. I've gotten to work with some great uh, luminaries from Australia. Uh, Greg McLean comes to mind immediately. He directed me in the Belco experiment, and he's yeah. you have him for the for Wolf Creek. Yeah, uh, but so many, so many wonderful, wonderful and talented uh, 
actors and, and other creatives from Australia. And in Los Angeles, you guys have built a real support community. There's a, a wonderful organization called Australians in Film out here. Uh, I don't know how they fared through the pandemic, but mm-hmm. but uh, it is it, it's I'm always delighted to get a chance to uh, work alongside an Australian. I think there's a lot of I grew up in Boston, Massachusetts, and for whatever reason, I think that there's a, a simpatico in our uh sense of mischief i think <laughs> i was wondering when you were asked saying what we would call a redneck i was like i was wondering what the answer would be because in my mind my name went to bogan have you heard oh of- yeah i've heard the term i've and heard the I was term like, i thought maybe that's where that was going to go but the fact that he just said aussie i'm like yeah that, that checks out <laughs> <laughs> yeah no he's a he's he is a, a dear guy and it's wonderful to see his continued success uh oh. he's er- he's earned every bit of it yeah and when looking at looking at like these these games and like and then some of the films that that you've been in and like they do lean into that sort of like cultural relevance and like do you think that Borderlands like do you think it'll alter the impact or like change perceptions of the game's legacy at all? Well, I wonder. I you know first and foremost, I think it's it's important um, to to understand that that. The, the what the games do and I think that this applies to a lot of the the uh, you know the last of us or fallout uh, these other properties that you know I think have done uh, yeoman's work really in in uh, getting these stories you know those of us that are gamers it is not a surprise to any of us the 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 caliber of storytelling that is taking place within uh, the gaming, sphere particularly within single player games uh these narratives are literary in scope they are performed by actors um who are every bit the the talent that we have on camera Uh, many of them in fact are on camera you know the lines are blurring Mm -hmm. all the time so i i don't think though in all of this that there's any threat for lack of a better term Mm. to the to the original property yeah right i don't i as magnificent as as uh, bella ramsey and pedro pascal are in last of us i i don't think that there is any one coming for the extraordinary work that ashley johnson and troy baker did in the games that that is not challenged or threatened i think but there is this this wonderful thing that these great stories last of us just being one example that many many people would never digest just because you know one of these (laughs) freaks them out yeah um and one of these i keep handy all the time (laughs) but (laughs) but uh that these stories are migrating uh into other realms i think is only good for all of us i think it's only good for the video game industry and i think it's only good for uh cinema Mm. who you know is continuing to be the again going back to what a miracle it is to make a film um it, it is increasingly the environment of the profession that an ip has to have existed or performed somewhere else before a, a studio wants to invest in it um and so i think that means we're going to be going to to a lot of the video games and and my hope is is that borderlands like all of these other titles is going to do some good for the video game industry for actors within the video game industry and and for the broader audiences so i i think the more people that understand that real art is being made real stories are being told and real actors are doing real work in this space um i'm glad to be a part of anything that brings attention to that yeah i know that i know that you've got a got a heart out in like seven minutes so i'm just yeah i'm just we'll go right up to the edge but i do have i got a i got a heart out yeah um but like i was wondering like was there anything that you that you learned about yourself as an actor with this role that you perhaps like hadn't experienced prior (laughs) that's a a really deep one to last (laughs) that's a really thoughtful question (laughs) Um, you know, I, I, I don't quite, it's, it's such a great question. I'm not quite sure how to answer it, except 
um, that, you know, I've had, a, I've had, I've had a, a lucky career. Mm. I've, I've, I've had an interesting career. I've, I've gotten to work alongside a great many uh, just uh, mind bogglingly talented people um, behind the camera in front of the camera. Um, I got to work from the ground up on a series that I think is going to stand the test of time in the, in the titles of red dead redemption. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I am, uh, I'm going to get, I mean, I'm playing with house money. I I've, I've already won. Um, so to be on a set with, with Kevin Hart and Jamie Lee Curtis and Kate and Florian and Janina Gavankar and Bobby Lee, and to be surrounded by these folks and to feel, uh, at home amongst these extraordinary people is a milestone for me. And, and uh, so um, what did I, what did I learn? Um, I, I learned and I continue to learn and I continue to be amazed that I, I ran off to join the circus and uh, uh, there was a, a place for me, you know, and even if it was always just going to be shoveling shit behind the elephants, I was happy to be in the circus. So when you wake up one morning and, and you're on set with all of these people, uh, you're, if you're not pinching yourself at your good fortune, I think you're an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, that's, that's kind of, yeah, that's, I mean, I feel like that's the kind of perfect quote to, to end. No, cause like I, as, as you were talking about, like I like meeting your heroes and like, if you're not taking, of like enjoying the opportunities and like I look at my job and like the people that I get to talk to like I never would have thought I'd be able to check the kind of list that I have and it's and, and then being able to talk to you know to creatives like you who just like it just I love being able to talk to like every every person on a film set that I possibly have access to because you just learn everybody's experience is is different and um yeah like it's just yeah, I'm just someone who who loves what I do, and I can tell that you love what you do. And um, I'm I'm always going to want to meet my hero. So it's like I think that's the best way to to look at it. So I won't keep you any longer. I know that you've got to head out, but thank you so much for taking the time out. And I'm um I'm looking forward to to Borderlands and beyond for you as well. Oh well, Peter, it's been a real pleasure. I hope you enjoy the film. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm so glad we got this time. I, I'm sorry it was so brief, but. Uh, uh a really great conversation, man. No worries. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, as I said, you'll you'll enjoy your day. Whatever you have planned, it's gonna go well. <laughs> <laughs> your lips to God's ears, man. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Have a good one. Till next time. Thank you. Uh,